Hello, welcome to what's next section and I'm the course director here for the APC and my name is Dave and as you can see I'm the ACCA qualified accountant. So in this particular section, particularly I'm going to help you through the next of our exam sitting, how you're going to prepare for your upcoming sitting exam to make sure that you gain a pass in the exam. So as you can see we're going to cover four things in this particular section. First of all, the papers that you're going to select for the upcoming sitting. So we're going to look at the F level paper as well as the P level and how you're going to select the papers so that you uh, can pass the exam more easily because as you can see there will be lots of these overlaps uh, among those papers so uh, the strategy will be absolutely important. The next thing that we're going to cover as you can see is the exam technique and of course past the exam first of all you need to go through the syllabus but that's not the most important thing that you need to do. Perhaps the most important things that you need to do is to have the exam technique in place so you can pass the exam more easily. I'm going to explain to you why in a second. The third one going to introduce to you the resources particularly on the ACCA global website and how you're going to filter those resources in order to help with your exam success and finally make sure you're going to choose the recognized tuition provider uh, registered at ACCA so that we can help with your exam success and remember APC is the ACCA Go Learning provider. So let's kick off by first of all have a look at the papers that we're going to select in the upcoming sitting. So as you can see, uh, there will be F1 up to F9 and then P1 up to P7. But I'm going to pick up the F5 paper onwards uh, to see how we're going to get on. So as you can see, nowadays we've got four exam sittings per year. And that being the case, for each sitting, you can choose the maximum of four papers at the time. Okay, so what do I mean by paper? It's like the F5, F6 and so on. So let me introduce to you one by one. First of all, F5 is the performance management. And as you can see, we've got also the P5 in the bottom is the advanced performance management. Yes, you're absolutely correct approximately more than 90% of the knowledge in the P5 is building upon the F5 paper. So which means if you decide to choose for example paper P5 as one of your optional papers, making sure your F5 knowledge is absolutely sound in order to proceed with your study. Of course the best way from my perspective to pass the paper P5 is first of all know your F5 knowledge related to management accounting related to for example the planning for the short term paying for a budget in other words and planning for the long term setting up the strategy making decisions and controlling the entire organization so make sure for example the variance analysis calculation or simple calculation you're absolutely happy with those bases but in the paper P5, making sure that you also focus upon the real life companies. So making sure that you know how to apply the things that are in the F5 to the real life companies and also by practicing lots and lots of these P5 examiners own style questions so that you can pass this paper more easily. And of course all of those papers, 100 marks in total, 50 will be the passing mark for the benchmark for you. So, after we look at the F5, now we've got the F6 taxation. So taxation normally is just to be the calculation based paper. And that means as you can see in the bottom, you also have got the P6 is the advanced taxation. So the P6 will be based upon the knowledge that you've learned in the F6. Lots of this overlap between these two. And that means if you're happy with the F6 before, if you decide to choose which optional paper, for example, P4 up to P7, two papers out of this four, which one are you going to use? Which one are you going to choose? 
So if you're good at the calculation, surely P6 will be one of your optional papers. But remember, P6 in particular and P4, the syllabus is huge. And that means you have to memorize quite a lot of these things. You have to learn quite a lot of these things. So, but it's not that difficult to pass, to be perfectly honest. Okay, so that's the taxation. So from my perspective, if you're studying the F level of the ACCA papers, for example, F6 taxation. Within the taxation, we also talked about the non tussic capital allowances and also some of the pension, that kind of stuff. And as you can see, F6, to summarize all other bits and pieces that you are going to learn, for example, in the F9 financial management, F7 financial reporting for non-current asset, for the capital allowances, into one single paper. And as you can see, the F6, yes, you can choose that paper. It's the uh, compulsory paper that you have to choose before you complete the whole ACC qualification. And that means it's relatively a separate paper uh, from others. Not much overlap between uh, this paper and others because yes, there will be links with the F5, F7, even F8 and F9. That's not a problem, but it's relatively a separate paper. And also for the F6, it's not that difficult as long as you understand the logic related to the calculations and you practice lots of these questions, there'll be no problem for you to pass this paper. So, moving on then, we've got the F7, which is the financial reporting. So, financial reporting is based upon the knowledge that you've learned from the F3, which is the financial accounting. So, financial reporting is just to be the financial accounting, it's looking backward, which means we have sold the product to a customer and we generate, for example, $100 of the sales revenue. So financial accounting simply records that $100 into, for example, the statement of profit or loss. It's just to be a statement that recognizing or recording all those historical transactions that have already happened in the first place. But that's different from the F5 performance management because F5 is determining what we're going to do and F7, which means after we've done so, record them. And that means, as you can see, you can choose the paper F5 and F7 together because there'll be overlap between these two papers, for example, the ratios calculations. They are the same, really. And also in the F9 as well, for the ratios calculations, that would be just to be the same. And of course, you can argue that the F5 performance management is all about the management accounting knowledge that you have already studied in the paper F2, management accounting. And that will be very, very similar concept to the F9 financial management. But F5 performance management is all to do with the costing, budgeting, various analysis and so on. That's all about the cost accounting stuff. But for the F9 financial management, you can also argue that it's quite similar to management accounting. But in the paper F9, we are particularly focusing on the Cheshire's work related to investment, financing, working capital decision, business valuation, as well as the risk management. So of course, from my perspective, yes, you can choose, for example, the F5, F7 and F9 paper together because there will be lots of low overlap between uh, among those papers. So for example in the paper F5 performance management that we talked about the relevant cost concept related mainly for the direct material as well as the labour. But in the paper F9 we'll also recap on this knowledge, for example the relevant cost concept but not related to direct material labour anymore but related to specifically to a non-current asset. So that's it. And of course you can argue that yes paper F8 is the audit and assurance paper and lots of his students has struggled with the audit and assurance. Uh, but audit and assurance that means 
based upon the F7 knowledge, which is the financial reporting, that we have already recorded the business transactions into different statements, for example, the balance sheet, the P&L, and so on. And in the F8, we're going to check it. And that's it. So that being the case, there will be lots of this overlap between these two papers, and that will be uh, the points that you have to remember. Because, for example, in the paper F7, We've talked about the IAS number 2 inventory. We talked about the IAS number 16 property plant equipment from the accountant's perspective. How are we going to record this transaction? And in the paper F8, we still use those accounting standards. For example, we talked about the IAS number 2 again, but in the paper F8, we are not talking about how we're going to record the transaction related to inventory PPE. But we are standing from the auditor's perspective of how to check them. For example, for the inventory, how we're going to check the cost, it will be correct. How we're going to check the numbers by uh, using the inventory counting, counting the numbers of inventory, and that's all we need to do. So as you can see, those are the F-level papers from the F5 onwards. So from my perspective, uh, if you're ambitious, for example, you can choose F5, 7, 8 and 9 together because F5, 7 and 9 there will be lots of overlap F8 and F7 there will be lo lots of overlap between these two Alternatively, if you're not so ambitious for example, if you only want to choose two papers um, per sitting you can choose F5 and F9 because there will be lots of overlap between these two because it's all about the management of accounting but if not, for example, you can also choose the F5 and F7 because one is looking at the future and one is looking at backwards. Alternatively, you can choose F7 and F9. Also, one is looking at the future. For example, financial management, we talked about uh, which projects that we're going to invest our money to. And F7 means after you invest in your money, how are we going to recall this transaction into the statement? Alternatively, you can choose, for example, the F7 as well as the F8. Lots of overlap between these two because one is related to the purpose of the account and one is all about checking the account. Okay, so that's the combination of those papers. Those will be the strategies that you can have, for example. So now let's look at the P-level papers. So P-level papers, first of all, we have got three compulsory papers, it's the P1, 2 and 3. And then we have got the optional papers onwards from the P4. Now, what do I mean by P1? P1 is governance, risks and ethics. But we can argue, first of all, we need to be an ethical accountant. You have already studied the ethics in the F8 in particular, is the audit and assurance. Lots of this overlap between the F8 and P1, to be perfectly honest. At the same time, the paper P1 will also introduce to you other ethical theories that you need to learn. And also, that we've studied the corporate governance, also in the paper F8, audit and assurance. And also you can argue that we've studied that in the F4, corporate and business law, I can even argue that we've studied that in the paper F1, which is the accountant in business. Yes, some of you may have got exemptions from those papers, so that's not the end of the day. Because in the paper P1, in particular, we will be studying the corporate governance, for example, the Sound Bay Sox the Act in the, U in the USA, and also we're going to study the UK corporate governance codes in the UK. And also, we're going to look at the risk management. But risk management in the paper P1, unlike in the paper F9, when looking at the risk management, we are particularly focusing on the foreign exchange rate risk as well as the interest rate risk. It's all about the calculation in the F9. But in the paper 1, for the risk management, will be a business common sense question. For example, the examiner will ask you a question whether or not we should buy the insurance uh, services related to this issue or we simply set up a joint venture or set up another company 
with another party to transfer our risks or we're simply not doing this project at all in order to avoid that risks and so on. It tends to be a basic common sense question in the paper one related to risks. So that's the paper one. And as you can see, the paper two, as well as the corporate reporting, is all based upon the things that we have already studied in the paper F7. And of course, there'll be lots and lots and lots of overlap between these two papers, to be perfectly honest. And if possible, yes, you can study these two papers um, together, that'll be absolutely fine. But paper two, on top of this F7 exam, it's all about the consolidation, plus lots of these uh, real-life uh, case studies of how we're going to apply the accounting standards into the actual case. And you can also argue that even the examiner will suggest that you should, if you choose the paper P7, which is the Advanced Audits and Assurance, building upon the knowledge that you've learned in the paper F8, you should sit these two papers, paper 2 and paper P7 together. Because as you can see in the paper P7 exam, it's not about the system audits anymore, which we have already seen that in the paper F8. But in the paper P7, it's all about the accounting standards knowledge that we have already studied in the paper 2 from the accountant's perspective. And in the P7, how we're going to check those accounting uh, accountants work based upon the IFRS. There will be 50 marks overlap between P7 as well as the P2, particularly for the accounting standards knowledge. So that being the case, if you choose those two papers together, that will be absolutely fantastic from my perspective. And of course you can see that's the paper P3, which is the business analysis, which would be another uh, good paper or the separate paper alone. And that means business analysis. From my perspective, this paper is a little bit weird. It's simply because business analysis would be primarily basing upon the knowledge that you have already studied in the paper F1, which is the accountants in business, that'd be absolutely fine. For example, in the paper F1, we have already studied, for example, the Mendeleev's uh, stakeholders mapping model. We have already studied the pest analysis or PESO. We also studied the Porter's Five Forces and even the Porter's Diamond in the paper F1. But in the paper P3, we are particularly focusing on how we're going to apply the knowledge that we've studied in the paper F1 into different real life cases. So that's been the case in the paper P3. The key to pass this paper is not to go into much depth that you have already studied in the paper F1, but rather we should practice the examiner's questions in the paper P3 in particular in making sure that we can relate all those knowledge that we've studied in the paper F1 to uh, the real life cases. That would be absolutely important. That's the paper for it. You've also got the paper forms, the advanced financial management, all based upon the F9 paper knowledge. But to be perfectly honest, from my perspective, we will be going through the whole paper F9 that what you've studied in the F9 will be examined in the paper 4 as well. And also in the paper 4 in particular, we will be studying some other bits and pieces, for example, the risk management in much more depth, for example, related to those futures contract, options, swaps, contracts, and so on. And at the same time, yes, about 30% of the F9 knowledge will be imported in the paper four, but most of them, from my perspective, is new to student. At the same time, for the paper for the key to pass the paper for is not about the calculation. Remember this, because lots and lots of students are struggling with the calculations, relatively difficult in the paper for, yes, I admit that. But the key to pass the paper for is all about the comment. It's all about the narrative part. Because a hundred marks in total in paper four 
will be split between 50% related to calculation and another 50% related to comment. And making sure that comment in the paper 4 relatively easy compared to paper P7 as well as the paper P5. So making sure comment is absolutely sound in the paper 4. And of course for the rest of the calculations, yes, aim at for example 35 marks out of this 50 rather than scoring 100% of that 50 related to calculation in the paper 4. Also we've got the paper P5, it's the advanced performance management that we've said to you before. That paper P5 is all based upon the knowledge that you studied in the paper F5. And the key, again, is to practice the examiner's questions and also look at the examiner's comments and so on, making sure you are able to relate the knowledge that you have already studied to the real life cases and that will be absolutely important key. And of course you can argue that ACCA has provided you with the options that you can choose two questions out of these three if you want to be a treasurer in the company responsible for the investment, financing, working capital, risk management roles surely P4 would be a desirable option and if you want to manage the company from a CEO's point of view yes P5 will be important. If you want to be a qualified uh, tax consultants and so on, P6 would be your option. And also if you want to be an expert in the IFRS and also to start a career as the auditor, P7 would be the best choice. Uh, two papers out of this four, sorry. Okay, so that's all about the papers that we would like to select, okay, and also a combination of those. Um, in the upcoming city exam. So, uh, so far I'm sure that you're absolutely happy with the links among those papers and what we're going to study in each of these papers in the ACCA syllabus. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'd like to remind you, so whether or not you have gained a pass or fail in the uh, uh, in the, for example, March 2016 sitting. So if you have failed the exam, don't worry. Make sure that you focus upon the exam techniques that I'm going to uh, talk to you in a second. If you have passed the exams, surely congratulations, but life has to move on. And of course, some of you watching this video may be ACC affiliates now. Congratulations again. So have you considered, for example, the um, the project, for example, applying for the MSc in the London University. So if that's the case, yes, APC, we can provide you with the mentoring section related to your project as well. But, so first of all, let's have a look at the exam techniques. Exam techniques is absolutely important. So what do I mean by exam techniques? It's all about the tricks that you need to have uh, so you can pass this paper more effectively. So for example, some of the tuition providers as well as the test books have used a very, very complicated approach to prepare for the consolidated account. So for example, if you have set the paper F7 or P2, if you struggled with the way that you can uh, prepare for the consolidation account, so here's the improvement. We can use, for example, here for the APC, a different approach from what you've seen in your early studies and so on. You will use approach, for example, to prepare for your uh, financial statement or constated account more effectively. It's a very, very simple approach. And of course, our courses, for example, we include a lot of these mnemonics. For example, if you struggled studying the paper F8, P7, and even the paper 1, governance risk and ethics. It's all about the written part of the question. And surely, if you simply read the test, there will be lots of things in there. You, have, you haven't got enough time to go through all of them. Or maybe perhaps you have already read through the study test, but you cannot even remember uh, what you have seen in the study tests. So if that's the case then, mnemonics will be absolutely important. 
but surely I've chanced some of you are self-studying the ACCA qualification. So if that's the case then, yes, it's absolutely important that you summarize the knowledge that you have already studied. So for example, you can record the video's audio to remind you of what you have already studied as the summary. Alternatively, you can mind map those knowledge that you have already studied uh, so you can look at that when you have already gone through that in the future. That would really help. And also, um, it's very, very important for you to study the ACC knowledge but at the same time practicing the questions. So if you practice the questions, absolutely important for you to do your summary. That means when you read the exam answer, for example, summarize that into a key point or bullet point so you can check that uh, in the future more easily. Because if you haven't done so, if you have practiced that question uh, and you see the exam answer, that'll be absolutely fine. But the exam answers are so long. So in the future, when you uh, practice that question again, perhaps you have already forgotten what you have done in the past. So it will be quite useful for you uh, at this point in time. We start practicing those questions and also summarize them into the key point or bullet point. So in the future, when you recap all these questions again, you'll find it easier to follow. So that's my own approach. And that's the exam technique that you need to have. And of course, time management is absolutely important in the ACCA papers. So here for the APC, we will use the deadline approach to plan your time. So students sticking to this approach will certainly 100% guarantee that you will finish off the entire paper on time. Okay, so we will introduce to you to this particular exam check for a deadline approach to time management uh, in our entire course in a second. So the next thing that we're going to introduce to you is the resources that you can check out onto the ACCA Global website. So simply www.accaglobal.com and you will see the website works like this. So very, very beautiful website. Uh, so you can see, so think ahead, it's ACCA, so we need to think ahead as well from the student's point of view. So first of all, how we can uh, locate the resources onto this website. In the bottom of the page, you will see the past exam paper, its most popular section, where you can get access to my ACCA, ACCA qualification, events and so on, but past exam paper from my perspective, is the most popular resource that you can click on. So after that, you will see this page, and you can filter any exams you want from the F1 up to P7, and at the same time, you will see lots of these resources in there. So from my perspective, if you're self-studying the ACCA paper, syllabus and study guides will be absolutely important, as well as the example document. If you are not self-studying the ACCA papers on your own, for example, you join the online course here for the APC, those two would not be so important from my perspective. But very, very important though, the, spe the specimen paper is very, very important because you will see the style of the question and the style of the paper and so on, as well as the past exam papers, if possible. Download those past exam papers, including the questions as well as the answers, print them out uh, and then group them together as the case study materials. So that will be absolutely valuable to exam success. And also from my perspective as well, the technical articles will be very, very important. Because for some of the papers, such as the paper P4 as well as the paper P7, Advanced Audit and Assurance, if the technical article comes up, it's highly likely that in the upcoming sitting that this technical article would be the exam question appearing onto uh, the upcoming sitting exam paper. So make sure that you're ready for this. And of course, if you're sitting the paper F1 up to the paper F4, 
practice test will be valuable to you as well. You can check out the pass rate if you want, but the average pass rate for all those ACCA papers will be ranging from 30 up to 50%. And also what will be very, very important is the guidance from the examining team. If you click on the guidance from the examining team, you will see the examiner's approach as well as some of the examiner's report. Examiner's report absolutely important. It's simply because particularly for those self-studying the ACCA qualification, after you practice the past exam papers and looking at the answers provided by the examiner, you will then see the examiner's report detailing for each of these questions what will be the weaknesses and what will be the strength for the students in uh, the previous settings. And that will be absolutely important and also key resource that you can check on onto this website. So, as you can see, uh, you can DIY on your own. I mean, go to this website and click on the resources on your own. Alternatively, particularly for those if you're self-studying the ACCA paper on your own, you can also check out our website, it's globalapc.com. There'll be lots and lots of these free of charge videos onto our website detailing each of these uh, important topics. For example, the statements of cash flow, pet promotion and so on. You can check out that website, our website, and you can find those videos in there. Alternatively, you can simply go to the YouTube channel and search for ACCA online and you will see APC. We've got lots and lots of videos onto the YouTube channels that you can check it out. And of course, it's absolutely important if you're not self-studying the um, ACCA uh, paper on your own, you can choose a recognized and registered tuition provider. So here for the APC, we are ACCA approved learning partner with ACCA. So we work closely with ACCA to provide the online courses to students from all around the world. We've trained more than 4,000 students across the globe to pass the ACCA exams. And um, you can rely on our study materials to pass your upcoming sitting ACCA exams as well, including our live online sections where I uh, will be interacting with you directly online, no matter where you are and also with our other expert tutors as well. And also we will have the tuition and revision lectures going through the whole ACCA syllabus, including the exam techniques that we just talked to before, and practicing lots of these past exam questions together with you. And of course we will have our own study notes. You can follow our notes rather than other textbooks, and you can pass the exam more uh, easily because in our notes We'll have lots of these shortcuts, mnemonics, exam techniques, past exam questions, and also prediction questions and so on, in order to help with your exam success. And also you can argue that tutor support is also important, because if you've got any questions, just email us, of course, uh, we'll answer your questions shortly. And also we'll have the mock exams as well, which may be very, very similar to upcoming city exam, and we will mark it for you with the individual feedback of how to improve your performance. ACCA is relatively difficult, it's tough really, but you can pass ACC exams easily with our help. Hope you find this section interesting and useful and look forward to seeing you in the next of our section then. APC, accounting for your future.